Hello, Hello. welcome to the Dublin Arsenal podcast. I'm your host, Jonathan Giles, as always. On tonight's show, Sunday, March the 10th, we'll be reviewing our Premier League fixture against Thomas Frank's Brentford side. We'll also be looking ahead to Tuesday night's must win Champions League last 16 second leg against FC Porto. So sit back and enjoy the show. Before I come to my guests this week for uh, tonight's show, I'd like to mention our friends like last week from Pepsi Cola. Um, congrats on their logo review, reveal there. Um, more white. Um, it's their first in 14 years, as Martin said last week. Um, and their logo is Pepsi Thirsty for More. So um, a big shout out to them and um, give them a like on Twitter if you can. Um, on the show this week, I'm joined by my regular guests, Eamon Donnelly. How are you, pal? Ah, evening, Jonathan. Evening, Ed. Evening, Brian. I was watching Ski Sunday again there. Eddie the Eagle came down on a pair of hockey sticks. Hockey sticks. He got them on the young Hicks Road show. Um, no, I am. Um, I'm good. Um, yeah, good, good, good day yesterday. Um, actually, it was in in the company of Professor Scanlon there um, yesterday. So, um, really good day. Yeah, I'm also joined by Ed Scanlon, another lifelong gooner. How are you, Ed? And welcome back. I'm still still recovering. Um, st- pain in my kidneys from um, being out after, or is that just the beer in the river bar? Don't know which. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, it wasn't a perfect weekend, obviously with the rugby. But um, there's um, so I know some of our colleagues were glued to their other television, watching the egg chasing sport instead of the real thing. It's good to have you on, Ed. <laughs> yeah. I'm also joined from the US, New York, by Brian Joel. How are you, Brian? Pretty good. Can't complain. I um, actually showed up late to the game because I was coming back from New Jersey, but I got there right in time for us to score the goal. I think it was actually my doing, but that's another <laughs> story. But, uh, you know, what superstition after all? So we're good to go. <laughs> John, Jonathan, before you start the show, um, I want to give out uh, a big shout out to uh, uh, my dear friend and the friend of this show, uh, Richie White. Uh, who's an Everton fan and an avid listener. Um, Richie's father and great pal, uh, Richie Senior, passed away uh, the other day. And um, it was, you know, um, it's a sad time for us. So I just want to reference that and say, Richie, I hope you're keeping okay, pal. Yeah, here, here, um, the second that, Amy, yeah, condolences, um, Richie is. Whiteley. Um, it's never an easy time, yeah. So for everyone from the Dublin Nurses and Supporters Club um, um, sends their condolences, um, well said, Eamon. Um, just before we get into the um, Brentford review, how is the Arsenal Supporters Club in New York, Brian? So, actually, the interesting thing is uh, I usually go to um, this bar called the Hanlon's on 14th Street, 1st Avenue, um, but... Because I was coming back from New Jersey, and um, you know, I don't know if you're familiar with Penn Station is on 31st Street and like Eighth Avenue. So essentially, the old the, the bar I went to yesterday was called Old City, and um, it's on 20th Street and Eighth Avenue. So therefore, I had a bag with me. I was like, you know what? Let's just go there. And I had friends who were going to be there already, so I decided let's just walk down those 11 blocks. Done. It was a decent time. I can't I can't complain. Uh, a lot of the old Hanlon's people were there. Uh, we were upstairs. It was a good time. And uh, yeah, but, but, but your real question is, how is the Arsenal support in New York? Busy. <laughs> <laughs> it's very busy. <laughs> yeah, every time you send a video, it looks happen, yeah. Well, I will always say this, you know, I started going to this stuff when um, it was just one bar, like no, Nevada Smiths, I and mean, everybody was there at the same place. It was, you know, Chelsea, Liverpool, Arsenal, United. And, you know, that's why I have friends amongst, uh, you know, a lot of the supporters groups. But, you know, now that we have our own bars, it's not the same environment, but it's 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 fun. I love the fact that we've grown. That's what I can yeah, say about it. The there we go. Yeah, yeah, it looks like it's always fun. happening when you send the videos in. It looks like it's a real... Yeah. Everyone's so close together and all. Yeah. The low ceiling is a bit. Yeah. That's I cool. stay in yeah. a little area and then I let it be. Yeah. <laughs> I let them do their thing. I'm old now. I can't do all that stuff. 
Oh, it's no, great you're, to ma- see you're making a good show do with Henry. <laughs> 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 After yesterday, yeah, you, you could have a few more rides to go with ten games to go. Yeah, but it looks um yeah. like our own supporters club in um the River Bar, yeah. It's great to see the Gooner Bears worldwide really grow. So much! Oh my God, it's yeah. an amazing time when I was out there. Yeah, great. And I still great have that have car. Back How does that card expire ever? Or <laughs> <laughs> it's a gold card. <laughs> as long as ours will keep winning, it's a, it won't expire. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll take that. <laughs> yeah, keep, keep that framed. You never know when you might need it again. Um, Please. it'd be great to have you back over sometime, Every Brian. Time yeah, and... so happy with me. Done. Yeah. Um. We kick on to the review of yesterday, that's um two one against Brentford. Um goals from ourselves by Declan Rice in the first half with a really beautiful header and great assist by Ben White. Um Johan Vista got the equalizer near the end of the first half. Um to an unfortunate howler from Aaron Ramsdale, which we'll get into. And um the man that can do no wrong. Well, the two men really that got the last goal, uh Eamon Donnelly's love child Ben White for the beautiful assist. And uh, Kai Havertz, who that header, if that was a few months ago, would have went up and high and wide. But the way he directed that header, he t- his eyes were just on that ball, and that header was so powerful the keeper just couldn't keep it out. But he's really becoming a fan's favourite now. You could just see that the way he celebrated and that smile on his face. You know, it's like Declan Rice when he scores. You know, he's just become one of our us now, really. And as the Sky Sports commentator said last night, sixty-five million well spent, and it's starting to look like a bargain out. So if we wait long enough, the same done. He said everything works out. <laughs> but um, after that result yesterday, and with that draw today, uh, with Man City and uh, Liverpool. It leaves us 64 points now, top of the table. And that goal difference from them, big wins over the last few weeks, um, has done us the world of good now. And you can nearly say it's in our court now, you know. Um, but it's starting to be a tight three-horse race. Um, but that result, that draw today now, really has uh, given us really a great incentive now to keep going and go to the Etihad with real belief in, what was it, three weeks' time? Um, to the match last night, um, I suppose the main talking points really was um, Aaron Ramsdale. The spotlight was on him, wasn't it? Um, and it was just an unfortunate howler. But I, I think he did make up from for that from Nathan Collins' header, and then the outrageous volley from um, Ivan Tony from midway. He really they were two match winning saves. Um, and uh, I have to give it to him. Any other keeper probably would have had their head down at half time. That could have been, you know, a shocking second half. But he put, put his head up being the pro that he is. Um, he never really put a foot wrong, really, last season. It was just unfortunate that he's come up against a good keeper in David Ray, that he's lost the spot. But um, he just needed to get that ball out of his feet quick enough, you know. You could see that he he just gives that t- extra touch. And with his, they've studied that, obviously, on him. But... Um, Really, I thought he made up really for it in the second half, and I, I could really have no qualms about him. You know, I thought he really had a decent enough match. Aside from that, you know, he made up for it. Um, ben White again, two quality assists for the goals. He just keeps going on from strength to strength, game on game. Uh, Declan Rice, he's adding goals now to his game the last few weeks, along with uh, the brilliant midfield play and um, his assists from corners. You know, he's going from strength to strength. and. Um, okay, and Odegaard in midfield does a, a magician. Um, Havertz again, I suppose the talking point for him was to dive in the second half for the penalty that wasn't it wasn't given, but it wasn't a penalty, like it was a clear dive, but I don't think it deserved a red. The amount of mess and Brentford done in the game, they slowed the game down, really something terrible, you know, with their play acting. I thought our own Ed Naiman, our own Aidan Connons at Brentford was quite a nine. You know, trying to wind up our own, you know. Um, uh, but really, aside from that, it was kind of a wake up call, you know, over the last few games we've been spoiled with a uh, big win 6 0, 5 0. But as Eamon said last week on the show Wednesday, this was always going to be a tough game, and he, you hit it on the nail, Eamon 2 1 was a fair prediction. Um, Brentford did frustrate us, but they're the type of games in the past we might have drawn or even lost. But as Arteta says, we stick by the game plan. 
and thankfully work down the end and it leaves us top with 64 points and you know we've got a few weeks to the next game but it's I think that definitely leaves us in very good stead and that that, that game will be a bit of a wake up call but um, I'll come to you Eamon you're taking yesterday's match well as you said it, it was as I predicted and that's not um, me saying if everybody listened to me everything would be all okay. no, yeah. I always felt I always felt <clears throat> that they were going to be disruptive and I always felt that they were, they were going to try and play the game on their terms and um, uh, the ball was only in play for 49 minutes out of 100 less than 50% so um, that'll tell you the type of stop start game it was and I'll deal with Thomas the Frank engine now in a while and because he's beginning to rightly piss me off now like, I'll deal with him in a while um, the, the West London tube murder. I'm telling you, lurking beneath that barn, if there's something serious in there. But anyway, uh, look, um, in, in terms of analysis of the game, you know, we controlled the game, um, uh, but we were finding them really, really hard to break down. They were playing with a, they were playing with a five and a three in their own box. They were that low, and just huffing the ball up to Tony, hoping that he could bully uh, our two centre halves. They're not up for being bullied. Tony was useless yesterday. I know he had one good effort and um, a ball brought to him and it was a nice piece of improvisation, but he was useless and clumsy. And I don't want that thick head near our club. I just want that on the record. Yeah. Um, as far as I'm concerned, he's Troy Daly, um, uh, Mark II, you know, and I don't want him near the club. Um, but anyway, um, we got our goal and Ben tried something a small bit different, uh, which I like because we've been trying to play angles and, you know, with Odegaard, Saka, and then Ben just decided, um, I see something here, and uh, you know, cr- lovely cross uh, for Declan, uh, great goal, uh, and we were totally in control until the calamity happened. And um, the calamity, uh, I, I'm not down on Aaron Ramsdale, I think he's a great lad, uh, I think the energy he brought to the club was really important when it happened, but I've been trying to point out to people he wasn't the goalkeeper that we actually wanted. We wanted Raya, but Raya wasn't available. And Raya unexpectedly became available. And this is a rootless business. I was delighted that Aaron's mistake didn't cost us the game. Yeah. Um, and he did redeem himself. But, you know, we had some differences of opinion with a couple of people in the club yesterday saying, well, that's because he hasn't played. That's nonsense. If you go back to the Southampton game last year, when he gave away a goal in the first minute, kicking it straight to their centre forward. If you go back to the community shield against Man City in the first five minutes, he was almost blocked down on his line. The Nottingham Forest game, the same, right? And the Brentford game at home, uh, sorry, away. Yeah. It was, it was the same stuff. He's just not quick enough on his feet. Um, he's an emotional goalkeeper rather than a, pra- a pragmatic goalkeeper. But I was delighted for him that he made it. And there were two. There were two fine, fine saves. Uh, really, really now reliant on agility. And that's a strong point. I felt he got a bit bullied at corners. He's, he stands with his hands in the air. I can't understand that. You're leaving yourself open for pointy elbows into your ribs. Yeah. The end's layman used to stand with his, his yeah. elbows. Yeah, was, yeah. Yeah. You know? <laughs> uh, but anyway, look, um, we, we got that. I'll tell you, just to finish off... Um, yeah, we were good from set pieces. We were in total control. Um, but what happened in the second half was Brentford smelled a bit of blood uh, by disrupting the game. And unfortunately, there was 20 minutes where the game was played on their terms. Stop, start, stop, start. Ball in the air. Myself and Ed were only talking about this in the club as the game was on. Everything settled down. And what I said was, we have to have the courage to get the ball back down and play the game on our terms. And you know what? That's exactly what we did. We got the ball down, even though it was only five minutes to go, and we played the game on our terms. And the goal, I mean, it was so calm for Odegaard to do what he did. It was, I mean, first of all, he's got to deal with a header bending down that he cushions to Ben, he gets the ball back. Ben, ben decided, Ben was the Declan Rice yesterday. The one that didn't want to didn't want uh, that want the three points in that game. Yeah, he wasn't accepting no win, right? Ben gets into a position, puts a, an absolute peach of a cross, and um Havertz puts it in. It was no more than we deserved. 
I just want to mention two more things. First of all, we should have two penalties. Leave aside the Harvard's one. Gabriel was uh, American football tackled, right? Now, we were already 2-1 up at that stage, right? But the one on Trossard is a disgrace. I mean, if, the, if, if VAR looks at that and says he hasn't been impeded while he has a chance of getting the goal, well, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. So Thomas the Frank Engine, you little West London tube murderer beneath that horrible little barnet of yours, which are older Danish face than your barnet suggests you have. Thomas the Frank Engine, come here to me. I want to have a word with you. Kai Havertz should have got sent off. Get up out of that from Fingless. That's what I say. Have you seen her <laughs> this season being sent off for diving? Because I haven't. So get out of it, right? Um, <laughs> I mean, even if Havers did dive, Garnacho was diving about 10 times every game, never gets it, right? Okay. Um, some of the treatment on Trossard in the first half was disgusting, you know? Um, and by the way, Brentford now, to me, they wear the same kit. They're the new Stoke, and I'm not liking them anymore. Yeah. I hope you get relegated. I'd love to see Luton do a woo and put you down, which are stupid days burn it now. That's all I have to say. What did you make before we move on to Ed and Bryant? What did you make of Aidan Collins, uh, Eamon? He was very frustrating yesterday, I thought, wasn't he? You know, he's really roiling up. Well, I was on the Ken Barlow, a friend of mine. <laughs> he was saying, <laughs> right in the day. Um, no, um, he was, but the other fella, the, 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 the other centre half, I can't remember his name. Sure, he spent more time on the ground than. No, he's like Newton experiment. Yeah. No. <laughs> he went down like a roll of Lino. Lino Richie, eat your heart. He, he went down like a roll of Lino about 45 times. And one of the ones, he hadn't even got touched. You know, yeah. it was absolutely disgraceful. Thomas Frank, I, I right. say this in a serious way, he said all this to mask the fact his team can't win a bloody game. Yeah. And they're hovering in the relegation zone. Go on, manage your team. And, and forget about errors. But, and you know what? The last thing, sorry, I did, I did mean to say this in my commentary. I watched them being tortured by Liverpool. They never laid a glove on them. They fancied, oh, Arsenal don't like it up them. And we'll come and we'll, we'll bully the Arsenal around the place. You know? Um, and we're not up for that anymore. And I'm glad they, they left them behind. That's six points off them. Thank you very much. You know? Just one more thing, Eamon, as well. The Declan Rice effort he had to hit the crossbar, do you think that deserved to go in? It was, it was some strike, no, wasn't it? No, because he didn't kick it accurately enough to go in. <laughs> it only goes in if you hit the net. No, it was a brilliant effort. Yeah. Do you know what? To do what he did with the ball from where he was and the way his body shape was, yeah. I, I, I thought it was incredible that he got as close as he did. Yeah. It was a wonderful yeah. effort. It, 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 you actually, if you see it from behind where he hits it, and you see... The, the absolute swerve on it. Um, I mean, but it was a, it was almost a, to me in real time, that looked, oh, what's he trying that for? And then all of a sudden, it's going to hit the angle of the post. And I think it was great yesterday, you know? Yeah. It was really good, you know? Yeah, top performance by Edith again. yeah. Showing great resilience at one all, you know, to go and find a winner. It reminded me, as you said, Eamon, of the Brentford away game when Kai Havertz got yeah. that late, late winner. But but the, the, the one thing that, that was different uh, about yesterday's game and the away game was that up from the 65th minute to the 85th minute, the game was being played the way they wanted it to be. And we needed to show a bit of courage to get the game played on our terms, get the ball down on the deck and do what we do. And rather than play emotionally, which we would have done last season, right, and start huffing balls in left, right and centre and running around, charging into the finish, we did it the right way. Because as Johnny Giles, you know, the, 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 the other Johnny Giles always says, uh, if you open the ball in the box, uh, it's the right thing to do. Do it from the start. <laughs> you know, like, if you open the ball into the box, is the right thing to do. Well, why don't you play like that all the time? So just because it's the last few minutes, we kept our head and we did things right. So I'll let the other lads in, but that's my take on yesterday. Oh, yeah. by the way, uh, Jeremy Ali Adier, he was, uh, he, I don't know, the, 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 he was he, he was brilliant. He was on the cow commentary on Arsenal.com. You've got to love him. A beautiful delivery by Devin Boston. <laughs> you know, he's got, he's got, 
he's got a half French, half German C in it. Yeah. He's got a twang of Beautiful delivery by Declan Rice in it, mate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he's got a yeah. London slang and a David Gin and a Tom. It's a bit like Hector Bellerin, this half Spanish, half Cockney. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. in it, mate. <laughs> yeah. I know um, you've been waiting a while, um, Brian, um, still on the bench. Um, we'll come to you, Ed, don't worry. <laughs> um, Brian, your take from yesterday's game, another vital win, eight wins in a row now. Um, what did you make of yesterday's game? Okay, so quite frankly, uh, I have two questions. Um, I just want to ask, am I allowed to bring something of this in the camera focus? Go ahead. Uh, yeah. All right. <laughs> so, there we go. A unique look. Well, Once I have you've to got ask, to I, have to be I know I'm already on camera and I know this is recording and everything, but I don't think that was probably the best time to ask question. My point about yesterday is this. You know, taking what we have had for the past, you know, for this month, uh, you know, in, in February with the amazing number of goals we've scored. Um, you know, we we rewrote the situation in terms of goal differential. I mean, at the end of the day, let's have us be tied with whomever, but we're still going to win because of all these goals we scored in February. It was not what I expected. I mean, yes, it's a derby. It's London derby. It's Brentford. We got that. But, you know, when that first goal went in, and I think it was, what, the 19th minute, um, I was like, all right, well, this is a foretelling sign of what's to come. Now, with the Ramsdale situation, <clears throat> I will say, like, look, I've always been a huge fan. I was actually, you know, Captain Ramsdale over Raya from the get-go. I didn't know why we changed the situation up. But I have also realized that, you know, of course, you know, Ryan couldn't play because he was on, you know, Brentford before, but I got comfortable with Raya. And while technically I might think that Ramsdale is a better keeper, Raya has, you know, distribution qualities that are amazing. And we furthermore have developed like a play style around him. And, you know, Mikel's not doing something just out of the box randomly. Like he knows what he wants to have on the field. I get that. So over these games, over this time, I'm like, okay, well, I'm 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 growing to you. Great. This is fantastic. With that said, when that ball came back and with that pass, and he took a little bit too much time, and I was like, that's probably gonna be, you know, I'm I'm considering it more or less an own goal, quite frankly. Um, it was not the best moment. And furthermore, I mean, let's be clear, it's probably going to be his last, uh, you know, start for Arsenal. Yeah. And, you know, that's why I'm very happy we won the game. I mean, I'm happy we won the game, period. But I'm very happy that we won it for him so that he doesn't have to, you know, have egg on his face, you know, going forward in his career and so on and so forth. But you know, obviously it was going to be a tougher game than the ones we've had because you know, they always give us a, a hard time. Um, Brentford and quite yeah. frankly with our ability to just like stick through it as as you said I mean like you know with the concept of that you know from the what was it 50th minute to like maybe the 80th or 85th minute like you know it was a little bit of a slog for us we had to you know suck through it and get it done but we ended up getting it over the line and I'm very happy about that of course I think we all are um, but you know I don't generally see concepts of you know, two wins in one weekend, which is essentially what happened today. And I'm beyond pleased about that. Um, but, you know, I'm thinking about the concept of, and I know we'll probably get into this later. Maybe we will. Um, but, like, you know, who do I want to win today? Well, no one, obviously, and we got that result. Um, but if anybody had to win, it would be City because we have to play them again. Um, and we're done with Liverpool and they were technically they're ahead of us, so whatever, but or were ahead of us. Um I'm just pleased with the results and I think that, you know, I all of our all of our players played particularly well. I was actually very concerned about um, you know, what happened after the last game with you know Saka going off and there was all this conversation about like, oh, is he injured and whatnot? But no, Mikel made the right decision to take him off. I actually wish that he took Martinelli off as well, and then he got injured, but we have a lot of time before our next game because, you know, Chelsea's in that situation, but, well, not a lot of time. We have the uh, 
Porto game, which we must win, of course. Um, but uh, yeah, sorry. Um, but <laughs> quite frankly, you know, I, I mean, like, let, let's let's uh, in a in a in a happy um, mindset say, hey, you know, um, maybe Martinelli is just resting so he can play for the Porto game, and that'll yeah. be better, you know. Otherwise, um, but quite frankly, it's it's just a concept of let's just you know, like, they all don't need to be. Five nil, six nil wins. We can have these two ones. We just have to get it over the line, and that's all that matters. Yeah. Um, and quite frankly, because I haven't been on this before, and I know I've been, you know, invited yeah. many a time, but um, I will say that I do like our situation more now than I did last year because last year we had, you know, it wasn't a proven team necessarily. We didn't necessarily have like you know uh, a grit behind us. You know there were a lot of new pieces. There's a lot of figuring things out. I believe nowadays we can make that run of form that will get us over that line comparatively. Where you know yeah we were up by 15 points in Christmas or whatnot, right? But yeah, that sucks to lose that. But you know being in the thick of it, knowing what's right ahead of you, what you have to accomplish makes all the difference and i'm gonna leave it there and you know jump in because i'm sure i'll talk in a minute <laughs> <laughs> and i've been wanting to jump in so many times but i've kept my mouth quiet <laughs> <laughs> it's the way we like it on this show <laughs> um just before i move on to ed uh briefly uh brian how happy yeah. how happy are you with the turnaround to kai havertz particularly since oh, january uh, onwards he's a different player isn't he you know, I've never really liked Shakira songs, but um, I'm a huge <laughs> fan now of Shakira songs as a result of uh, his amazing performance. <laughs> and um, I, I'm pretty sure I've sent the videos to you guys of, uh, you know, how crazy the bar goes in New York when he scores. Um, but yeah, he's, I mean, look, I thought he was going to be a dud. And there's always a the concept of like, you know, the uh, the Chelsea spy, which we've had a few of in the past. Um, but he is coming through and he's he's coming good. And I think he's kind of earning the, uh, the, the, the moniker of, you know, King Kai. With that said, though, <laughs> you know, he's not like going to be a prolific, like, I don't know. Um, whomever like scorer, like he's not, he's not, he's not a natural nine. Okay, he's not going to put the ball in all the time. And you know, I think that I, I will give myself a little bit of a, uh, you know, uh, a lashing because I'm like, look, you know, he's he he can't score every chance. But then there were a lot of shots that he did screw the pooch on. But it is what <laughs> it is. I'm happy that he's coming into form. <laughs> he's finding his ability. Everything's going better. Just, let's keep it going. And I'm just going to leave it at that. <laughs> well, I just I wanted, wanted to, I wanted to, I wanted to address you, Jonathan, because you keep saying Kai Havertz torn in fortune since January. He I, was there I just, of the month in November. I pointed I, that out in countless <laughs> over no, I, I, I just find Eamon, since he's come back in January, from that trip in Dubai, it just seems more, you know, revitalized. You know, there's like a lot of one on one oh, management. Well, something it's magic. Unfair, it's unfair on the lad to be saying he only turned his form around then. He was voted by the supporters as the best player in the club in November. Now, what part of you doesn't get that? <laughs> I hear he wants to go to Chelsea in the summer, but I hope well, that. Because Bello didn't want to go to Chelsea. I don't want to go to Chelsea. <laughs> I did 78. No, it's that, just they, you, no. It is. It's so. just great to see he's come. You know, he's come good, and he's a fan's favorite. You know, it's great to see the fans singing his name. But I don't want to come to Ed because he's been on the bench for quite a long time. Uh, <laughs> you were very really yesterday, Ed. Uh, <laughs> this this was a massive three points, wasn't it, Ed? In terms of the title check race, now. Yeah, I was shouting for um to thank Eamon to get El Nenny on um at the victory cigar. He wasn't even in the he wasn't even in the squad so much as I was paying attention. But um another shout out yesterday, um Jorginho, another Chelsea sp- um reject yeah. that um has turned around um, um he's absolutely superb, um real kind of Rolls Royce engine, like an older model than Rice and Odegaard, but you know, a wise head, you know, really experienced player there um doing the job that we know party can't really do anymore and um we'll talk about that maybe some other sometime you know that uh, that's the situation the club are in yeah 
Yeah. Yeah, yesterday was controlled in parts, but Arsenal let the disruptions that um, Brentford were allowed to create were, you know, just kind of ruined the momentum. And, um, and I think Arsenal's concentration at times just drifted um, out, out of their, you know, set plan, which is attack, 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 and, you know, keep the momentum going. when They can't do that when we don't have the, when the ball's not on the pitch. Um, and that probably was one of the reasons Ramsdale got caught just before, um, I think it was the 49th to the 50th minute. And um, Wissa has been on a bit of form for Brentford, um, one of the few players who, who is, has form. And he just read it, but he knew where to be and to pounce. And it just, the way the ball bounced and spun, it just, you could, but this is um, one of the things about Ramsdale, um, emotional intelligence. I don't think he has the you know wise head, he, um, but you know he's, he's like a kid playing football, and he, he's likable because of that. You know he's got a big smile, and he you know interacts with the fans, and um, you know and it's hard not to you know have a sympathy for him. But you know the club's got to be ruthless. Yeah. So God knows we had to we put up with gents. Um, he put up with bad keepers before for far too long, and he's not a bad keeper. But he would he have the patience to sit around for a few years, wait for his turn? I'm not sure Arteta believes in the rotation of two keepers. So, and then they got the kind of situation with England where he's never going to get his place back. Southgate is a gobshite of an England manager, but who puts it in, lets some players know that they'll get picked no matter what. And then other players won't get picked for the England team. And luckily enough, Benny White doesn't give a toss about playing for England, which is brilliant to um, Benji Blanco. Um, <laughs> and I have to, re- some people might um, bring up the last time I was on this, probably the reason I've been banned for uh, months is um, I had cast doubts on my own, on Arteta, which you know, uh, so I know. knows I'm a, you know, an Arteta believer for, the sense, um, for the last 10 years. Um, that I, but you have to put it down to Arteta's coaching that Kai Havertz has um, got better, as well as his own ability and his own hard work. I mean, I've never seen the harder worker um, off the ball. Like the amount of work he he's, he just does phenomenal um, impacts on on the pitch everywhere. And like some might say, like if he's um, you know cry havoc, <laughs> as Shakespeare would say, because he goes around and. Absolutely, you know, the, the defences don't know what to do with him. Maybe because he doesn't know what he's doing himself. But he gets in. I mean, he's involved in everything. Like most of the goals that we score, he's, you know, part of the build-up and, and creating of. And he's a big fella. I mean, I mean, look at our defence. And there was a clip I saw on YouTube or um, TikTok earlier. Like our boys don't get bullied. They're, they're you know, it's like the... The, the the older defensive lines of the Invincibles or um, George Graham's time, you know, there's, there's lads there that are not putting up with shite. And probably the only one that would, you know, Trossard would be the smallest guy and he was the one that got picked on a few times to- uh, out there. And, um, yeah, another point is um, we really missed Martinelli and yeah. Saka. And if we could have played the full width of attack from one side of the pitch to the other... Brentford wouldn't have been able to cope with defending that wide a, a zone. Or if I had any ambitions, they would have put 10 people, 11 people behind the ball to do it. Yeah, and then the we could have started to pick it. And then Trey on Saka every time. Trey on Saka. Yeah. yeah. And I think Saka's used to that. And if Saka's good enough to get two, the ball back out of his feet. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. It's necessary Saka. that he's used to it because, quite frankly, I mean, that's going to be the rest of his career, quite frankly. Yeah. You know? you know, what I mean is, They've got very tight control. They've done this tra- coach training system of really super fast control inside really compact spaces. So if Saka gets the ball, three come out to him and surround him. He can get that ball, bounce it back very quickly back to Odegaard inside, who's got the space then. And many times uh, Odegaard was winding it up on his left foot. Again, Brentford were reading it to get a, you know, pop a shot off uh, quickly. because he's, he's lethal on the edge of the box. So again, Brentford had done an awful lot of homework on us for this game, and that's all they can do. You know, they just try to do it like a Stoke destructive studies on what you know how to play against us, not play them for themselves. 
Like there was very little chance Brentford were going to score an open play, um, which um, it was good. And I saw today's game um, in comparison, nowhere near. I mean, it was just chaos at um, the cup. I mean, it was just nowhere near our standard of football. I mean, it looked good for the I TV. I wouldn't because... agree with that. City for the first 20 minutes were outrageously good. Yeah. It really were. Well, to be honest, our, our own Cueven Keller was outstanding in goal for Liverpool. Yeah. He's a great goalkeeper. Yeah. Yeah, no, you're right. City were good to begin with and they faded. I mean, injured um... or something? Is that it? Yeah, he's injured at the moment. Yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> can I make one other point that, that I forgot? I was um, just looking at me yeah. out there. Um, I, I said that we were very brave converting the game in the last five minutes from their terms to earth terms. Do you know who had a huge hand in that? It was Reese Nelson. Yeah, I was just on he just when, he, when, when he came yeah. on, he did everything calmly, sensibly, you know, no kind of oh, I've just come with ten minutes to go. I better make a mark, I better do yeah. he just got on the ball quite a lot, right? Trossard had obviously been kicked around the park, but Reese got on the ball quite a lot and did sensible things when we needed sensible things to be done. Yeah. And hats off to him. It was, it, it, well, it, that's it, why he's the last yeah. survivor of those uh, that group of players from the past. You know, they've all been yeah. shipped off everywhere else, but you know, he's still there. And yeah. I mean, he obviously, you know, we all remember that goal. So there's yeah. nothing needs to be said about that. So I think Ben White as well, as Amy says. He's so cool and calm on the ball and his delivery now is on on a, on a tee now. You know, like that ball in for um the two goals was just he was excellent on Monday night. I thought, but last then, night he's a really good footballer. Yeah, honestly. yeah. You know? I think it, he kind of goes. We've such a good squad of players now. I don't, you know, I don't. I wouldn't. Say, I don't really want to say he goes under the radar, but you know, he's not talked about enough. Maybe you know, he's very inf- influential, isn't he? Well, he's in the team every week. And yeah. you know, well, I, mean, I think isn't he though uh, under the radar? Because like, do we do we, is that is that not necessarily a negative thing? Quite frankly, yeah. because you know we have him as a consistently you know performing individual, and I think that you know him not being talked about, him not being you know overly observed, him not being studied, and yeah. like, you know done work on, I think does us a world of good. You know, because we all know like you know as our fans. What he will contribute, and like he's going to bring that cross, he's going to you know hold that line on the side. But with that said, I don't need him to be. I mean, I guess quite frankly, if he's marked as well, then that's going to free up space for Saka. But at the same time, no one's going to give space to Saka. So like you know, they're on the same yeah, yeah, you're, you're absolutely right, Brian. But I'm going to say this to you. I said it on last week's show. He's much more to the team than what he does on the ball. He's a personality on that team. You know, yeah. if, you, if, you, if you go into Arsenal.com and watch the highlights, when the second goal goes in, right, he's put the crossover. The minute it goes in, he's there to the fans giving it lots before Harvard even comes out. And then when the players are coming over to kind of congregate, he gave a couple of them a slap on the head. <laughs> I did, you know, he's, just, he's a very, very, very... Um, Brown just- very committed guy and, and he's just spoiling him and I think that and he's yeah. part of him but it won't be funny you know but there's a bit of the dark arts that he has you know old fashioned right. yeah, that's it you know, he, right. he's got a bit of the devil in him you know I like it yeah. you know yeah. I like it. I'm, I'm a whole. I'm a huge fan of it. I mean, yeah. my only question is like, you know, what are we gonna do necessarily when we have like other people like fit again, like Tommy Asu, like where is he gonna? Situation and like, look, I want everybody to be back fit. I want you know things to be perfect. I want you know the timber situation. Ben I obviously too many games. Ben, 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 well, the the answer to that, Brian, is Ben is playing too many games because we're so light on that side. You know? Right, but if you have consistency and you are and things are getting done correctly and so on and so forth, I don't know how you switch that up. Like, yes, okay, okay. so sure, you know, start Ben, but then when do you put in somebody else or do you put somebody else in instead of him because there's a fixture log kind of concept? Well, with if, this you go, if you go back, if you go back to the West Ham and Fulham, it was just before Christmas, Christmas and New Year's Eve, right? And um, Ben was playing on an injury. That right. nobody was talking about. He, he, run out of gas. he had run out of gas. 
you know? Yeah. I'm saying sure. that. I, I think Yuri and Timber, um, even though he started out his Arsenal career on the left-hand side, will play more on the right-hand side than on the left. And will take some of the load off them white, you know? Um, but sure. look, yeah. They're, they're, they're things to be excited about, not worried about. You know? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's what really, what I really liked about the second goal, aside from obviously Havertz's powerful header that even the keeper was even knocked back by, was the way Ben White lost his marker with the one-two from Odegaard. He was just gone yeah. down, that, and the, the, his marker looked around. He was gone, and the the ball in was just. You know, it was just what a ball. Like, you couldn't oh, see, man, see he, he, he wouldn't accept not getting three points. Yeah. I mean, that's like, yeah, about that. Like definitely yeah. You know, yeah. Sanchez. Yeah. Like, yeah. He was like, happy. You know, like, he was kind yeah. of like wide open, unmarked, more or less. And I was like, really? Like, Jesus, like, this is the end of the game, you guys. Like, you're going to let yeah. that go? Okay, cool. I'll take it. Jeez. <laughs> yeah, I, I, mean, I, I think Rhys <laughs> Nansen, it was a good point made by Eamon. Uh, I don't know if you agree, Ed and Brian, but he definitely did make, he brought a bit more energy, didn't he, when it was kind of going. Oh, he made, energy actually, just, just, just sorry, Aiden, putting across, he made a tackle on Aiden Collins and that really got the crowd lift, you know, and from then yeah. on in, he was, so, he was so committed. I think Reese Nelson is a fantastic player. I think that's why I said, like, he's the one who stayed, um, there's the one who was kept uh, amongst yeah. that, like, a whole group of people, um, who were there, and I like that, like, like that, you know, academy situation. Um, and there's a reason why because he's a great, he's a, he's he's a player who can bring in the energy, he can bring the crowd in, he can do a lot of different things that are, you know, the intangibles, right? Um, and I think that it is, you know, what a lot of teams lack, um, but he definitely can bring to us, and I'm glad he does, because, like, there's a lot of individuals who I would like to have, you know, kept on to, but, you know, you know, wages and so on and so forth, that's not going to happen, um, but, like, you know, for example, um, you know, Willick, right, he's been yeah. pretty decent at Newcastle and whatnot, but I think that, you know, we made the correct, you know, upper management decision to keep you know Nelson for a reason. So, yes, I, I'm I'm never going to disagree with anything that Reese Nelson contrib- contributes to the situation. I mean, like, look, every time I hear his name, I only think about that goal. Like, that's, yeah, it. that's it. Like, he can do like, any, he can do no wrong help. after that goal. His that he's goal, safe. He's safe as an Arsenal legend. Yeah, that too as well. Yeah. <laughs> just like as well, Monday night football as well. Just briefly, that's tomorrow night. Ian Wright will be the guest. So that should be a good one as well. I think that's his first outing on BBC. But, um, he was I've saying met- last night, a match of the day, with 10 games to go now, you're, if, you're, if you're in it uh, with 10 games to go, you can consider yourself, you're going to be in it till the end of May. So, you know, yeah, if you can, we've learned a big time from last year, though, from last April onwards, when we had that bit of a, a nightmare, we've really learned, you know, this squad of players has learned a lot um, from that. And... I just like I'm to guess, sure um, about. that never happened. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, we, we actually won the title because my Man City are ducks. Right. <laughs> yeah, I can, yeah. <laughs> What's going on? This but is ridiculous. As, as I've been trying to say for a couple of months, you see, last season we were a firecracker in the box. Nobody knew we were going to explode the way we did. Yeah. We didn't know we were going to explode the way we did. Right. Not- and we might have got lucky if we hadn't lost Saliba. But our squad was too thin, and we were way ahead of where we expected to be. This season, we're probably still a bit ahead of where we expected to be, but we know where we come from. So the foundation, all of a sudden, the foundation for this season was built on last season. And as I said, we might come up short this year. There's no need for meltdowns if we do. And what I'm saying is that of all the teams in the top, we're going to improve because I can tell you this for something for nothing. All this reactionary stuff in the transfer window, you know, get Ivan Tony and get this and that, get Carlos kick the ball in. We've already got our summer plans nailed down. We know what we're doing. It's called Mbappe, yes, we know, yeah. <laughs> it, won't be, it won't be buying Mbappe, he's gone to Real Madrid, but we, we know yeah. what we're doing in the summer already. And I don't care who it is, so long as they know what they're doing. Yeah. It's not, re- it's, not yeah. Reac- 
It's not yeah. reactive. Plan. It's That's the bottom line. Yeah, and reactionary is never going to work, obviously. Yeah. 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 Yeah, there, I mean, is a plan, there is a plan in place, isn't there, Ed? The project is probably a bit ahead, but... The, trust, the, yeah, trust the process. Yeah, I mean, it's always like everybody knows we need one more striker at least. Yeah. Um, you know, as much as I like Eddie as well from the, you know, but Eddie's never going to be top class level uh, for, for us, you know, and um, and uh, Brian's right, like, you know, players that we've um, let go that, you know, would always liked, like, you know, it will be, um, yeah. you know, they just were never going to make it. They have careers, you know, great careers, but not Arsenal's right. standards that for the future. That we we need to win titles again, you know, uh, as a club do. Not you know, for, not for just them um, putting up my bedroom wall, but you know, just uh, <laughs> it, uh, you know, the club needs to be back at the level that you know they need to be feared again. Arsenal. Yeah, I think exactly. that's happening. I mean, yeah, yeah. Do you not think we're swimming into that space though, Ed? Yeah, that's what I'm get, we're getting. Yeah, I mean, where we're headed, you know? Yeah, I mean, we're the team that beat Liverpool and beat City at home. I mean, and those two managers there, like Pep and Guardiola, kissing each other, saying, "Oh, a draw, a draw is acceptable oh, today oh, for I them." Yeah, you know, just, <laughs> did, did anybody I, I hear the higher standards? Did anybody hear Roy Kane's comments um, when they no. were going around the table about who did they think and win the league, and it was all. You know, I think Liverpool, I think Man City. I'm watching NBC Sports. I can't, I can't see what you're seeing. So, uh, I'm just saying, did anybody hear Roy Kane's comments? No, I, I, I heard you, but yeah, I can't. I didn't. Yeah. I, did, I can't do it. Yeah, it's it's a different broadcast. Sorry, Brian. Did, were you? No, sorry, Sky Sports. Uh, no, he, is the main one. No, but he said. Uh, he said. I look at Arsenal. I look at Arsenal. Uh, you, you know, <laughs> and said, um, yeah, he said, and I look at the physicality of them and the size of them, and they're a different animal to last year. Yeah. And that's a lot because it takes a lot to move Roy Keane, you know, to change. You know, he's very. Yeah, well, if you make McCarthy, my ass on bacon slice. Yeah, yeah. I'll take him outside. Yeah. It's just our running is uh, that little bit harder than either Liverpool's or City's on paper. On paper. But, you know, we've, but to be honest. more uh, tough away games than either they do. But yeah. Uh, forget about all We win all 10 of them. So nobody can stop us. We're here to review yesterday's game, not to yeah. review the rest of the season. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, 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 there is one thing before I wrap up yesterday's game, lads, is the one thing I admired was at halftime when Aaron Ramsey was walking off and every substitute that came on that pitch was straight over to him, head up. You know, and there's the team bond. You know, it was great to see. You know, you know, don't don't keep our head down. And, and, and who's responsible for that, Jonathan? Dare I say, <laughs> our man and Jeremy? No, it is. It's down to Jeremy because he he has fostered what Jeremy Ali Ali Adier would say in the spirit of the core in it, mate. Right? <laughs> in, the, in the spirit of the core. In the spirit of the core. You know. <laughs> I have to get Jeremy on this show. <laughs> you don't get many of spirit of the cars and fingers here. I'm sorry for the continuous, uh, you know, uh, oh, vetted. You know, okay, Brian, um, yeah. yeah, I'd just like to get, um, I'll go around the table here in this one. Uh, starting with you, Eamon, man of the match from yesterday. I'm white. Yeah. Ed, man of the match? White, yeah. Brian? Yeah, right. no debate. White, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Ben White, hands down. Yeah. Uh, a, a superb game again. And you, that cracking finish he got against Sheffield United on Monday he does carry that on to the game yesterday. You know, just Our takes 10, us full of confidence. Yeah. Mark Nodegaard again, though. He's just been superb the last few weeks. Every time I look at him, he's just, just brilliant to look. Watch, isn't he? You know, fluid. Just fluid. Him and Rice. Sounds like an anti perspirant, doesn't he? Yeah. <laughs> Nodegaard. Yes. Torsi for more. <laughs> yeah. Look, when he, you our team, when, he, when he came to our team, I was like, oh my God, are we really gonna are we really pushing this guy out of you know Real Madrid? Is this really happening right now? Is that are they really gonna let this go? And I'm like, okay, great, fine. And he wanted to stay. And like he's the he's the captain. Like this guy is consummate. He's a consummate professional. I'm so happy to have him on the team. Like it's it's not even debatable. He is. He's uh. a, he's a he had a rusty first season, though. I will say, you know, you know, but he was given time and space to, 
I mean, he was yeah. he was very young. He was like only a, yeah. a teenager, nearly. Um, like you know, his first season wasn't wasn't perfect at all. But my God, he's you know come on and you know. But he knew what his potential I mean, was. I mean, that's all, like, even though you're right, like we saw that he had like you know a little bit of a little rustiness. He wasn't like always there for everything. But you know, we knew that he had that in him, and we gave him the time, as you said. Like, and it, he just has over exceeded expectations. I would say. Yeah. So you wonder, like, you know, what is Havert, Kai Havertz's ceiling? You know, I don't think it's been touched yeah, he's yet. He's still very young. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. 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 And you want to think that he's, like, you know, like, 28, but he's not. He's 20 fucking, what, like, four? Sorry. Oops. Four, yeah. yeah. It just seems he's around forever, isn't he? Yeah. But look, he was in at such a poor Chelsea were such a mess last year. You know, his head, was, oh. you could just see his head was out over the place, you know. And look, he's found a home now, you know, and thankfully... Um, 65 million looks like a mm-hmm. sniff of business considering yeah. the meltdowns we had in our group. Hey, look, 60 million <laughs> down the drain, Kai Havertz scores again. Yeah. Yeah. I have to say, um, <laughs> hopefully this 20-year drought ends this year because I couldn't do it anymore. <laughs> I don't mm-hmm. think any of our livers could stick another down 20 years. But um, we move on to Tuesday night's game. That's second leg of the Champions League. Um, 1-0 down from the fourth leg, but let's be honest it was we deserved to come out there with a nil nil really didn't we you know it's just a force that um we lost one nil at three weeks going out that was um we if the cream of europe now we saw from last week the likes of man city Bayern munich and real madrid are all in the last eight so it's going to be a really interesting um last eight if we do make and i can see really no reason why um I think we'll get a part of from the very start, you know, and if we can get an atmosphere like Eamon was at against Newcastle United at night, the way we, we can turn, you know, that real atmosphere go the hour before kick-off, you know, if that doesn't get the fans going, I don't know what will, but I think we just have too much quality there for Porto, you know, the likes of Pepe, he's getting on, but still a very good defender, but um, I know, I think it was 2010, when we won, we came back, we were 2-1 down, 5 0 Super Nick Bantner got a hat trick that night. Um, 20, I come to you, 2009, the 16th of March 2009. I looked at it before the show. Was yeah. it 2009? Yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah, I, I, looked, I actually looked at it. I looked at it before I come on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What I, not on? No, no, wait, like, so you brought out the fact, Eamon, um, that apparently, uh, what was it, uh, 50 or 49 minutes of um. Mm. Non play with the ball or whatnot. No. The ball was that, only in play. The ball was only like, in play for 49 minutes. Yeah. Exactly. So, but in the Porto game, it was like 40 minutes. And I'm like, yeah. what? Like, that's obviously their mentality. They know that we know how to play. Like, it reminds me of when we played um, AC Milan in the San Siro, like, you know, that was second leg. Yeah. And then they had destroyed the sides of the pitch because they knew what we were going to do. We were going to play down the wings. And they destroyed it. Like, like, like that should be illegal, <laughs> quite frankly. Like, what the hell are you doing? You shouldn't be allowed to do this. And we lost that tie as a result of such. But like, come the hell on. Like, I don't. It's just like, look, look. The bottom line is, we're at home. This is the better situation because you know we had a higher situation. Whatever. The point is, we need to play our game. Not let them, you know, you know, That's fall right. over or whatever. But obviously, when it comes to UEFA for referees, they're gonna like, you know, slow the game down, you know, accordingly and so on and yeah. so forth. Which is obnoxious, and we're gonna have to just bide our time, realize, you know what? Let's just avoid these tackles, these incidents where they will do that. I mean, because we saw the first leg, we have to realize the second leg. Look, just so stay away from them. Do the best that we can to stay away from them. Let's just yeah. play our game. Move around the box and then put these balls in that we always do perfectly. End of story. That's all I have to say. Well, Continue. You see, I'll tell you one thing that helps us big time is the, the away goal drill has gone. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 If the away goal drill was in place now, no, but like, I'm cool this now. would be <laughs> a completely different proposition, right? Because yeah. Porto don't concede many goals. If you look at the domestic league form, um, they don't score many and they don't concede many. Concede many, yeah. Uh, so if, if they got one on you in our place, we we're in trouble. Oh right? yeah, so yeah, you know, but, but, but with the way goals rule gone, I just I, I, what we need to do is um, we need to play calmly but quickly, right? 
um, quick but not in a rush, if, if that makes sense. Because we, we, yeah. we've, got to, we've got to play energetic football but not emotional football against them. Because, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, because they were the shower of Roger Hunts, I mean, uh, over there. They really were, you know. They really were, like, you know. Um, the shit housery that went on was shocking. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I'm just listening to Brian's point about your wife, a referee, is they tend to, um, they must like the travel and subsistence that they get. They tend to go with the, whoever's at home, you know. They do, yeah. There is that, yeah, I agree. Oh, I it's mean, it's, it's up to us. You, you, I mean, you, you reference the AC Milan game. They turned us for 4 nil that day, right? Yeah. And uh, I went to the second leg. I was I was gonna I was gonna not bother, but I flew over to London for the second leg, and there was only one thing for it, because we were four 0 down. Everybody got absolutely rat arsed. And then we, we went in, <laughs> we went into the stadium, and it was like a hill concert. Do you know what I mean? Like, and all of a sudden we were training up at half time. <laughs> And then, and then we could we couldn't we couldn't sail the deal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we absolutely battered them um, in that home leg. I think Chamberlain missed a sitter, so it wasn't it? Oh, Van Persie. Van, oh, Van Persie. Yeah. One yes, on one with yeah. the keeper. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 I think it was Abiati was the goalkeeper. I think for uh, Milan, yeah. he was, had a keeper, but we. I, mean, I was oh, at, actually oh, I was yeah. actually at the away leg when Prince Bow was saying. Remember, he that lad that played for Port. Oh, he scored a worldy. Uh, off his chest, top corner pass. I think Chesney was in goal at the time, but the second leg we battered. I think we, got, I think Kishani got an early goal from a corner kick. And, um, and, uh, and Tommy, Tommy, uh, Riziki got one as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember I Van Persie, Van Persie like those, got a penalty. Those two legs, I remember one standout player in that game for us was Alex Oxley Chamberlain. He was absolutely immense in yeah. them two legs. I know, I know that was, um, yeah, and, and, but, I'll, but I'll never forget, like, we all got the half time and we were training up, but we were all locked. <laughs> we were thinking, what do we do now? I have to get home <laughs> <or something." laughs> Anyway, yeah. I think, I, 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 by the way, you know, just back on the park, though, because, um, yeah. you know, we have, to, we have to move the show on. Yeah. I think we'll be okay, but it's not going to be pretty. Do you think oh, no. similar to Saturday or sorry yesterday's performance, Eamon? Do you think two one? Oh, maybe? Oh, 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 absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Well, quite frankly, Brentford I don't want was to a good template. Yeah, scrub. I agree. Yeah, yeah. Into this thing, I, I I want us to actually have grit and get it done. I don't want it to be a, a smooth sailing situation. I want them to earn their stripes because they they look they they came from adversity last year. The majority of the players who are on the team, minus Declan Rice, um, you know, dealt with that loss of being oh so high up and then fall so you know to second, whatever. The point is, we need that mentality because, like, look, Declan Rice is gonna be fine. He he knows yeah. like adversity. He's he played on West Ham. It's cool. Uh, but my point is like that whole experience should give way to let's be in the thick of it with two other teams who are just as good as us. Let's get it done, get it done, get it done, and get it over the line. Because we are, as I as I will never not, you know, reference, this goal differential situation, which we have not had in the past for a very long time, is significant. Like, I don't remember the last time we had a higher goal. Like, like last year, we had a lower differential than City. And we also lost. But if we were at the same place with them, like at the end of the day, we would have lost regardless. Nowadays, come on, we got to get that done. Like we just yeah. we got to continue going the way that we we're going. End of story. I think if we show the performances we've done at home against the likes of in the group stages in particular, uh, Sevilla, PSV, and Lons, we battered them. Do you believe Ed? If we gel, all you know, Porto. They made life very difficult for Barcelona. Yeah. To be safe. But do you think I, if we showed that type of quality? I think if we go with a high tempo, and as, as Brian is absolutely right, don't get involved in close contact with them. They'll go down like cheap hookers if you go anywhere <laughs> near them. Um, so, you know, if we play fast, play controlled, um, and just hit them with such, you know, zinging pace on the Emirates turf. Um, We'll have them. Um, 
You know, I can see, you know, uh, if it has to be, goes, I mean, if it goes to penalties, it goes to penalties, but um, I think we can score two or three um, against them quickly. Um, I hope so. Uh, and, you know, the atmosphere should be banging. You know, the, you oh, know, that's, you know there's been a big turnaround, you know, in the last few years at yeah. the stadium, you know, um, you know they, could, they could do even better, you know, um, the, the club, you know, but, you know, there'll, there'll be noise and there'll be noise and smoking. Yeah. Shouting uh, plenty, so it won't be like really the boring European nights that you know, we used to have. And like you know, we did when I went to Wembley when it was dead, uh, dead zone for us in you know the old Wembley. Um, you know, just to build up the numbers because we didn't have them in Highbury. Um, yeah. But you know, those groups, those group sessions, um, that didn't do us any favors back then. But we're such a different animal now. You know, we're you know we're one of the top super clubs in the world. We don't have the Credentials in the in the cabinet yet for that, but you know, but Declan, you go back to Brian. Declan Rice is super super duper champion of the world according to West Ham fans last year. They won the the greatest European Cup of all time, um, or the smallest one. Um, but they so he's a he's a cup winner. You know he he knows. Uh, no yeah. no there's yeah. been no you know um, yeah. no doubts about his mindset. Neither Odegaard's you know yeah. and. You know, I mean, that's um, the like he's dealt with the adversity. He, I mean, being on West yeah. Fan, um, you know, it's. And I'm, not, I'm, not, I have a lot of friends who are West Ham fans, right? And I don't want to say that they're like a, an insignificant club, but they are a club that has, you know, gotten the stick for a hot minute of time. And uh, I, I feel like the fact that he got them over that line. More or less, it was more or less him, you know, that did it. And you know, they were like, you know, I remember when that when that game happened with uh, the six nil. You know, he didn't celebrate as one should not. Um, but I saw in the background, you know, West Ham fans, you know, clapping for him and his progress because they respect what he has done for them. He has done. I mean, he's also, you know, a young kid too, more or less. So therefore, like, look. Let's understand one concept. He has gone through the wars in a bad club, quote unquote. Now that he's here, you know, in terms of a bigger club, I think that he, you know, didn't need to be on that team yet. Like last year, I was going to say yesterday, but last year um, to understand the, the 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 drive and the the. You know, what we're trying to go for. Like, obviously, there's a reason why he came to Arsenal. And I think a lot of it has to do with Mikel, right? You know, he's he's a great, you know, ambassador for our club and so on and so forth. So, you know, he brought him here. He convinced him this is the place you should be at. And he decided it. And I'm not entirely sure how many goals he scored for West Ham. But I'm pretty sure that within the next, like, two years, if not yeah, this year. Yeah, the end of his career. Year, with, yeah, you're right there, yeah. Yeah. He'll probably acquit what he scored for West Ham in these next two years, and that's just yeah. bottom line. But I mean, his assists are you know, not even debatable as well. You know, you know, he's 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 that linchpin, that piece that we needed to right the ship. Yeah, and um, yeah, I hope there's a few more pieces to come. Uh, I mean, I think we can all see the project uh, the club are trying to make. You know, and. You know, a lot of people would have been Cronkays out or um, sacked the board over the last, you know. And I have said years that ago. Past, I'll be honest. <laughs> yeah. 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 But, you there know, is I'll, I'll give, uh, yeah. You know, I'll give young uh, Cronkay Jr., Josh, some credit. He seems to be m- much more involved with the Arsenal project. Not not so, you know, you know, doing it from the other side of Colorado or wherever the Cronkays are based. But, you know. So, you know, there is something happening. And, you know, it, it needs... They also own um, the LA Rant. I mean, it's Missouri. They're, they're a Walmart yeah. family. So yeah. Uh, but it's going to cost hundreds of millions again. You know, the, there's not just like um, you know, some of those English players or the players are being sold by English clubs this summer. You know, just ri- ridiculous money being asked for average players. You know, Seriously. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and, like, you know, think about it. Like, you know, what was it? Thirty years ago, we we're having like, you know, five hundred thousand pound transfers, and that's like the record, mm-hmm. one yeah. million pound record. Now we have like a hundred, hundred. I mean, we're going to see like one hundred twenty-five million for like an average player, or not an average player, but like a good player who could fit in any squad. 
But like, are we really talking about this right now? <laughs> like, it's well, absurd. scary to me. Newcastle haven't even. even started... Please. Yeah. The Saudis haven't even started to pay, to spend money yet. Really, at Newcastle, you know, on a serious level, they've uh, just got. Uh, um... Oh my god! Yeah. Ugh. I think this financial fair play is worrying a lot of teams, though. You know, and it's even kind of scary. You could see that in the January transfer window is the quietest in many a year. You know, um, I think clubs are waiting to see what happens to. Not everything and nothing in Forest, and if that is serious, well, then a lot of us could be in trouble. But you could see that why we only loaned, got loaned a deal for David Ray from Bramford. We could have signed, but due to the Declan Rice, Timber, and Havers, we, I think it was over the £200 million mark for those, right. three, you know. So, you know, we were, we were probably, it was probably kept kind of hush hush, but that, that I was coming down the track. In December, you know, the financial, they were looking at all this. I say we were given the nudge about that, but um, yeah, look, it kind of keeps everyone kind of in a realistic terms of transfer fees, maybe you know. Um, we've covered a lot, lads. Um, okay, tonight, can, um, can anybody hear me? Uh, yeah, welcome back, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, no, my camera's not working, it's just that, um, I, I, I can't show it to you, but um, the president, <laughs> Michael D. Higgins, has dropped in. <laughs> They started have a hospital, <laughs> hoping that the Gooners can go all the way. Now there you go. That's uh, uh, St. Patrick's uh, Day message from our president, <laughs> Michael D. Um, always welcome on the show. As always. Sorry, sorry, sorry to the listeners and viewers about my technical difficulty, but my, um, it's 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 misbehaving. But look, I think we got enough in, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think it's better we don't see Eamon's face. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Look yourself, Jonathan. The face <laughs> made for radio. Okay, well <laughs> <laughs> Once again, Eamon is coming down that P45 road. <laughs> Hopefully, he makes it till the end of the season. No, we've got yeah. quite a lot, and there's going to be a podcast for the review of the uh, FC Porter game on Wednesday. But, um, I'd like to thank my guests tonight, um, Eamon Donnelly as always, uh, Ed Scallon and Brian Jewell all the way from the US, thank you. Um, you can catch our show on the Dublin Arsenal YouTube channel as always. Like, comment and subscribe. Uh, thanks very much to everyone who listens and watches it. And uh, a shout out for um, Pepsi Cola, Torsi for more like the Gooners. So uh, it's Wednesday, I hope everyone um, enjoys the show for tonight and um, have a good week lads, thanks for listening. See you all. Absolutely. See you. Thanks, Johnny. Thanks, Brian. See you, Amy.